should be recording. Okay. So, just to kind of recap before the recording started, um, I was just talking about that this is going to be the main screen that we're going to be using to design all our um, horizontal and vertical geometry. So, we need to have it set up properly to where we can uh, be the most efficient. And I was um, and we need to see the, the box that has all the functions um, to where we can use use um, use the software to its maximum capacity. So if we go to tools and tasks, then here's all the all the open roads function that the software has, right? It has general geometry, has reports for horizontal, vertical geometry, quantities for cross sections, um, has horizontal, uh, vertical geometry, terrain models, and corridor modeling. So the main the main ones that I use are really these four here: general geometry, horizontal, vertical, terrain. Actually, five in corridor modeling. So, and so what I do with these um, these menus is you can move these, and if you see, I can dock it here, right? So. Um, so this is what I like to do with my main information that I want to see. And um, so what this allows me to do is if I'm trying to design something here, then I can just pin this and then it goes away. And then when I need it, I can just come back and um, keep it open or open and close it when I need it. So it's because um, this real estate here is is pretty uh, valuable, so you want to be seeing as much as much as you can. And um, so the next the next menu that we'll need to um, that we'll need to dock is the Project Explorer. And if you go to File, Project Explorer. So this this menu is going to tell you every single element, every single terrain, corridor, super elevation, every everything that's in this file uh, used by open roads is going to be in in this dialog box. So this is this is uh, this is really important and you uh, it's something that you need to know about because um, it's really powerful this project explorer. So we'll just go ahead and uh, so we'll just go ahead and dock this. Let's do this and then, um, so I usually keep this uh, hidden, but this one I usually keep open most of the time. And then when when I want to um, increase my screen, then I'll just uh, dock it. Trey, can you show us where that was again? I don't think I saw it. OK, so it's File Project Explorer. OK. Yes. Ooh, I don't have that. Uh, I, mine goes from item browser to references. Um, item, oh. OK, so why don't I, OK, maybe you can go to Settings Project Explorer. Hopefully that's there for you. Um, no, uh, let's just keep it as uh, let's keep the training going and I'll, I'll try to manage. OK, and then I'll I'll maybe look around and see if it's somewhere else, because maybe it's like a, some kind of setting that that I have to where. But yeah, I'll make sure to uh, to look into that and then give you all give you all an answer. OK, no problem. OK, so. The next. Um, the next 
menu that I like to have here is it's under the general geometry tab. And then it's going to be this little flag here, this, the civil message center. So what this does is when you're designing in um, when you're designing in open roads, you can use standards to design, which means like if you're doing a horizontal alignment um, and the radius doesn't meet the design speed, then it'll give you some errors and warnings here. So this is something that I like to use when I'm designing and we can and I like to dock this on the bottom and we can make this smaller and then can hide this so it's kind of hidden over here but um, I think this is a this is a pretty useful uh, function to where you can you can see the if you have some design errors and it also tells you like when when you place a line and um, all that other information about the microstation. So the next ones that I like to have are the the element information. And I like to it's uh, it's here docked on my screen. Uh, let's see, there should be a yeah, so if you go to settings, element information, hopefully it's there for you. And if you go to element information, it should be there. So control I should should work if, uh, if you can't see it. And so I like to dock this on this side, the right side. And what what this, uh, I mean, I'm sure y'all know what this does, but just briefly, um, if I want to just uh, if I want to see the information of an element, then I can easily do that by clicking on the element and then seeing all the information, seeing the feature definition, the, the name, and all this good information that we need, the bearing, the length, and all that other stuff. So I like to have have this um, and then the shit, I'm missing one. So there's a so for some reason I don't see it, but let's go to element selection. Yeah, it's it's for some reason it's not showing and sometimes it does that and that's that's one of the reasons why I keep it docked, but you'll um, you'll always have this element selection tool when you're using Power Geopack, and it's it's really helpful when you're trying to select um, select by attributes or like pretty much select a lot of elements that are on the same level or they're the same. Um, like they're either lines or ellipse or shapes or stuff like that. So I like to keep element selection docked right next to um, to this element information. And this is a this is actually a this is actually a really important um, menu that needs to be docked because if I because yeah you see I can't see it but if if it was if it was there this is the dialogue that that asked me the the prompt questions and it asked me um, it asked me what feature definition I want for this horizontal line and it um, with each function it has that it has different um, different variables that need to be um, to be input in order for that function to work correctly. So just make sure that this is docked to um, the right side and everything should be okay. Um, okay, so I think the, these are the main the, these are the main ones. And also, so I guess moving forward a little bit, um, if you go to workspace, 
preferences, then I'll show you some key um, key settings that I have that that help me that help me a lot. And so one of the main ones is this, the open two application windows. And if this is off, then it's only going to open one. And if it's on, then it's going to open two. So that's that's why you kind of you can see that. If I, that's why I have two two screens to work with. Right? You can see this one, and then this is two. So what I like to have on this on this side is. Um, so I'm usually working with two monitors, but now. Uh, right now I'm using one. So, but what I'd like to have on this screen is um, can, so I usually put the, my references and you can click on the icon or somehow open up the references menu. And then I like to keep this here along with the level manager. All right, and we can all dock these. Uh, we can either put it on top or on bottom, doesn't matter. But just so you can know everything that's inside this file, and you can also do, you can also do the models. All right, so we can do file models. Hopefully that's there for you. And then we can dock it exactly the same way that we docked the other ones. And then also the last one that I usually have is the level display. And for some reason it's not showing. Oh, here it is. Okay. So here's the level display. That's this little icon here. And then I like to dock it on this side here. Or is it going to work? Oh, man. Let me just have this one. Okay, so it's getting kind of cluttered here, um, but just just know that you can you can dock whichever dialogues that you uh, want and put them on both screens, um, and they're pretty they're pretty useful information um, so that you can um, efficiently work and know exactly what you're know exactly what you're seeing and what you're doing. So let me see if this is going to come up or not. OK, so back to the workspace preferences. So this was one setting that is very useful. Um, the open to application windows. And then if we also go to input, then I like to have allow escape command to stop current command. And this, this is a uh, pretty straightforward, but if we, when we're working in, um, in open roads, when you start a command and you end the command, then it still keeps you in that command. So you're either going to, hit escape, which is pretty easy, or you'll need to somehow get out of this command by probably, I would probably do something like that, and click this little one here. So, um, I just find it really efficient to use, to have this setting. So make sure to have this allow escape key to stop current 
command. And some of the last settings that I have are if you go to workspace preferences and go view options civil, um, you're going to have the this is not going to be set to 25. I think it's going to be set to 10 and uh, the manipulator size. And this manipulator font scale is going to be, I think, 1. And then we'll change that to 1.3. So let me go ahead and change these to what, see what this does, right, when I change the setting. So if I hit OK and then I click on my horizontal line that I uh, made or that I drew. So you can see that these these little balls are the manipulators that we're telling to increase the the size of those. And the font the font scale that we're telling to increase is this for the bearing and for the length. Right? And we can change these dynamically. Um, but, so if we go back to workspace preferences and we change these manipulator sizes to 25 and change the font scale to 1.3, then um, when you press OK, then you can see that it's, it's much easier to know, um, to know your information of the elements that you are looking at. And they don't have to be exactly what mine what mine are, but you can change you can change all these uh, like like the colors and if you want the font to be bigger then increase it. If you want the manipulator size to be bigger or smaller, then you can control these settings here. Okay, so that's really the basic setup of um, basic setup that you need in order to work efficiently in the software. So I'm going to go ahead and reference some files that. Does uh, does anyone have any questions this far for Trey? Okay, we keep going, Trey. Okay, cool. Okay, so I just referenced the I just referenced the alignment for this project. Um, the MDF alignment file, and what I noticed about this project is. Um, I'm just going to rotate this so I can see it, see the stationing go, uh, see the stationing increase. But, um, so this project is around 19 miles long, right? And, well, at least this alignment is. And when working with open roads, um, we want to, like, when we're making our corridors, which is where, which is when you have horizontal and vertical geometry and you have a typical section applied to that, that's, that's what makes a corridor. And so we want to limit the corridor um, length to four miles. So you want to try to have your corridor less than four miles. So what I did was I took you know, it was 19 miles and I just divided by five and I, I know it's going to be less than four. Um, so that's what that's what we're going to do um, when or that's what I would do when creating um, cross sections and creating if I was going to create a model for for this project. So with that in mind, there's something that we need to do and something that I, like pretty much every project that I start, what I'm about to do next is the first step, right? It's 
it's really determining the limits of your corridors. And then after that, you're going to be creating terrains from the tin files that are provided that that match those limits, right? Because if we have a corridor just in this just in this section and we have a terrain for the entire for the entire uh, length of the project, then it's going to it's going to make our file run slow and we we don't want that. So um, so that's what we're going to do. And if if you have multiple tin files, then you're going to create one big tin file. And then you're going to cut it up depending on whatever limits you you determine uh, based on how long your project is. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so first, let me show you the limits that I. OK, so here are the limits for the first segment. and. I'll maybe do a couple and then um, just to kind of so, so you can see the workflow of how I would do this. So the first segment is from the beginning to 1076. So, but so I just wanted to keep that in mind. Um, and but really, the first step is to create a uh, terrain from the tins provided, right? And for that, we're going to go here to terrain model. And then we're going to go to create from file. And so here are the, these are the two terrain models that provided for this project. So if I just import these just by clicking and selecting them, then I'll get this dialog box, right? So the only thing that I did was um, I, went to, I went to the terrain model tab and then I clicked this create terrain from file, right? And this is every time you have a tin file, and you want to use open roads, and this is the workflow that, that you need need to do. So um, here we're going to select the feature definition, and hopefully you let's see. So we're going to go to terrain display. Hopefully you have these settings too. Um, if not, then you can ask questions and I can kind of walk you through it, but it's it can get complicated. Um, having your software be able to read the uh, the resources. So but given that your workspace is all working fine and your um, the software can read where your resources are, then um, you'll pick the feature definition and then you have these terrain display. Um, folder and I like to use existing boundary for the terrains. You, you can use existing contours. These are the main the two main ones that I like to use. Um, so you can use either one. And we're just gonna go ahead and do import. Import terrain only and we'll import. See what happens. Okay, so this looks to be the extent of the uh, terrain, these two terrain files. So if I wanted to know um, which 10 files this came from, can anyone give me a location um, or a menu that can tell me 
tell me the names of these terrain files? Or where where the tin came from? Uh, if you clicked on that, element information might give you no? Yeah, yeah. That's that's one way. That's one way to do it. Um, and So another way would be to use the Project Explorer if, if for some reason you didn't want to use the element information. So there's multiple way to or multiple ways to um, see the information that you're looking for. And but yeah, the, those are those would be two two ways. And then you could also click and hover the terrain. And that would also um, that would also give you the name of the tin file that it came from. So when this is done loading for some reason, I'll continue. Okay, there we go. So now that we have we have both of our terrains, all right, we can see this is the section two, and then. Over here on this side is the section section three, right? So we have our so we have our ten files inside the inside our file or our design, and um, then we're gonna combine it and make one file, one terrain. So so we can then cut it up into segments. Um, Cut the terrain into the segments that correspond with the corridor limits. So I'm going to come to create complex terrain model. And then it's going to bring this dialog box. So then I'm just going to add these two. I'm going to say add and add. And this is all okay. So then we'll just pick a pick a feature definition, and we'll just keep we'll just keep existing boundaries fine. And then we'll just name this. And then I'm going to click finish, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. So it looks like this is our combined terrain model. And sometimes this happens with terrain, with terrain uh, or with tin files or terrains and open roads. But it's this is something that can be easily edited. And I, I won't go through it now, but um, maybe next session I'll, I'll show you how to Get rid of this. Uh, get rid of this little. This little sliver of interpolations that that happen when you create, when you sometimes create um, terrain files. So let me see. Okay, so now let's check out the Project Explorer and see what's see what's going on in here. So I'm going to unpin the tasks so we can see that here's the only thing that we did in this file, and that's um, create these terrains. We created these two from file, and then we combined, combined one, um, or combined them and made one, right? So here we can actually straight from the project explorer we can go and we can export this terrain model and create a tin for it so now we're going to have a tin for the entire project something that we didn't have before so um you just i'll go back and you just go right click export terrain and here are the options that you can um, which types of terrains that you can export. 
So we'll just do GeoPack 10 because that's what we normally use. And then I'll just save this and the desired location that you have. Does anyone have any questions while this is uh, loading? Uh, if I, <clears throat> since I don't have Project Explorer, how, how would you recommend I go about doing that? Oh, you can, so you can just click and hover the, the terrain. And then, um, then it'll give you the same, the same exact icon that it gave me here. And and I can go through it and show you once once this is done loading. Um, but yeah, no, it's going to be really really the same uh, as workflow. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Cool. So usually in with open roads, you can you can click and hover pretty much any line, terrain. Uh, horizontal curve or anything and it'll and it'll give you uh, it'll give you different options that you can that you can do with that with that feature right and that's the same with the that's the same when you're working with corridors as well so it's a pretty nice feature to where you don't have to be to where you don't have to be like coming to the menus all the time so it shouldn't take too long. But really, once once we're done with this, um, once this is done loading, then we'll we'll create shapes that we'll create shapes from the stationing of our um, corridors that we that we split, right? The first, the first segment that that we're doing is 875 to 1076. So we'll create a shape around around the terrain for those stations, and then we'll use a command called um, create clip terrain, and we'll use our terrain that we just created, the combined one. And then we'll just say create a clip one only in this segment that lies within our shape. And that's pretty much what we'll do um, to create our truncated terrains. And I'll go through that once this uh, finishes loading. So I'm actually I'm thinking about opening a file and then creating a new file while this is loading so we don't waste more time. So maybe I'll do that.
OK, so I'm just going to go ahead and create a new file. And so what I'm going to do is with the with the terrain that I that I'm creating, I'm going to create a uh, a terrain file. Right with and this is only going to contain the terrain. And um, so we do. So when we are working in open rows, we do want to separate the terrain from our. We want to separate it from having our corridor and our terrain in the same file. So we'll it'll be just like uh, just like the references that we use for sheets and other other designs. So I'll go ahead and use my seed file and then I'll create I'll just say OK, so now what I'm going to do is I will reference the alignment. Again. And this is. So this is the, the terrain that has the. This is going to be the the terrain file that um, contains. The entire. Uh, segment. So let me just, or that's going to contain the um, the one that we just created. So I'm going to go ahead and let me see. So hmm. let's go ahead and create the shape for our the shape that's going to clip our terrain and the the command that we'll use is here create clipped terrain model right so what so what you'll do is you'll import the terrain here using the exact um, same command that we used so we'll pick our combined terrain we'll bring it in and then we will create the shape that's going to clip it. And so we'll just go ahead and do. Um, so I do like to use the. The regular drawing commands for creating the shapes for. For the terrain, so I'll just go to 1076. And. I'll make a line that's perpendicular to the alignment. I'll do the same thing here. And then once I have these lines, um, and these links don't matter. You just want to be make sure that it uh, that it envelopes the section that you're trying to work with. So here's the 875 station, and here's 1076. So then, what I would do is I'm gonna place a smart line, and I'll just connect these points. And right, so this is my shape. So this this shape wouldn't actually be a good shape because it doesn't um, it doesn't envelope the the alignment. So so what I would do here is I would just add a add a vertex, insert vertex, and then we can come here and just make sure that exceeds. Okay, so it looks like my terrain is done. And so my terrain is then exporting and we'll just come check to make sure that 
it actually did. And here's the terrain that we created. And you can see that it's pretty big, so it, so it makes sense. Um, so now what I'll do is I'll go ahead and import that terrain using the same workflow that I demonstrated earlier. And so we'll do combined, we'll do existing boundary, import. Okay, no, that's good. So here's our here's our terrain, the US 67 combined. And then now that we have our shape, we can And as long as your shape is uh, is extending past the green, then then it's going to be okay. And but if it's not, then you'll then you'll have problems. So just make sure that whatever you want to be created um, is is within the shape. So once this is done, loading for some reason, then I can show you how to. So to create a clip terrain, you're going to use create clip terrain model. And then we'll come here and here's here's actually the element selection. Right. So when when you have the element selection docked on the right side of your screen, anything, any command that you use is going to show here. Right. And um so if we follow the prompts you can also see the prompts in the bottom left so this is asking me to locate reference terrain model and that's the first command that's shown here and then we'll pick the feature definition um and let's go ahead and just do contours here and then we'll pick one from 875 to 1076 and we'll use that and the clipping method will keep at external, so it's going to clip everything that is outside of the shape that we, um, the shape that we select. So I'm going to locate the terrain model, and that's going to be. You can either click on it or you can click it here, and then what does it say? Locate. So now it's asking me to locate the the clipping element, and then I'm going to pick our shape. And then I'm going to click through these prompts. And now we can see that since I since I gave it a new um, feature definition, now we can see that these are the contours for this terrain. And we can we can get rid of this um, pretty easily, but I I can go through that next next session at the very beginning. But now we have our clip terrain, and now we can use this when we're to limit the processing time when we're um, creating our corridors for our project. And if we go to We go to Project Explorer. Uh, Trey. Yes. <clears throat> uh, it's been a great job so far, and I think uh, just personally speaking on US 67, um, you know, considering how long the 
the Turing model is uh, when, uh, and I'm sure Robert and Daisy who and Rudy who have worked on this personally can attest to the fact that the master design files are not really receptive to any changes that you make just because I imagine the, the, the amount of data in nine, the 19 mile corridor is tremendous and where to process all that information it takes a yeah. while. Uh, so splitting this up is really going to help us out. <clears throat> but on that same note, I think most of us here have to jump on to another meeting at 10 a.m. our time. Okay. Um, so I don't know if you want to find a, a place to, to save us and then uh, we can continue this next session. Yeah, yeah, no problem. So I was just uh, finishing up. Uh, I I was just going to show you that here's the the new uh, terrain that we created and we can we can continue um, next week and then y'all can email me questions if you'll have them as you go and then we can go from there. But yeah, I can uh, I'll I'll stop the recording right now and then we can and y'all can go to y'all's meeting. No, but I, I really appreciate it, Rafael. Great. Um, yes, sir. This was really, really informative, I think. Uh, and I think I speak for everybody when I say that this is really going to help us out a lot. OK. Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a long, long process, you know, and and I think it's, you know, pretty important to understand, you know, the background so we don't make a mistake. You know, it's like when you receive the file, you know, you need to check the survey because if the survey is wrong, everything from that point forward is going to be wrong. So it's pretty much the same with these. You know, we need to set it up right. We need to have the same feet, the right features and everything. So when we're designing it, we're designing it right. Um, so the next session is, I believe, next week on. Uh, let me see here.